Hello, David Snowpack here from Snowpack Games, and this is part six in a tutorial series about implementing rollback netcode in a game built with the Godot game engine. In the last part, we talked about state in the context of rollback netcode, as well as state hashes and how they're used to detect state mismatches. We caused a fatal state mismatch bug in our demo game, and then used the detailed logging and log inspector tool from the Godot rollback netcode add-on to debug it. We also added support for state replay to our game so that we could see what a particular state from the logs looked like in our game. And finally, we went over the rules for what can and cannot be put into state. Whew. <laughs> the last video was epic. We did so much. This time I'm going to try to make a video that's smaller in scope, which will hopefully also be a little shorter too. My videos always end up being way too long. So anyway, today we're going to talk about adding offline play to a game that was built using the Godot rollback netcode add-on, because it is possible to use the Godot rollback netcode add-on with all the special methods or special nodes and virtual methods like network process and get local input when playing your game offline as well. So you can use use the exact same gameplay code for online and offline play. This is good because it means you'll write less code. You don't need separate code paths for each version because it's all the same code. It ensures that both versions will work exactly the same, but most importantly, it means that you'll be developing both versions at the same time, as opposed to building all offline and then adding online support or vice versa, which generally leads to a ton of rewriting and rework in general. Anyway, this is actually quite easy to do. It relies on swapping the network adapter class used by your game. Uh, network adapter is just another swappable class used to customize the behavior of the add-on, similar to message serializer and hash serializer, which we've already talked about. And just like those, you can configure which one is loaded when your game starts up in the project settings. The network adapter class is responsible for all sending and receiving over the network. Our PC network adapter is the default, it's what we've been using up to this point, and it uses Godot's high-level multiplayer API. The add-on also includes the Nakama WebRTC network adapter, which integrates with the WebRTC and Nakama add-on for Godot, which is another add-on that I created. This is what's used in my retro tank party game, and I do plan on making a video about it later in this series. You can even make your own custom network adapter, allowing you to not use Godot's high-level multiplayer API at all if you want. Uh, one example that I think would be really cool, and I might try to do it at some point, is using Steam's peer-to-peer -peer networking API for the low-level network traffic, but you could use any other service like PlayFab or whatever, or even just directly send UDP packets. But the add-on also includes the dummy network adapter, which doesn't do any network communication at all. It's used in the state replay feature that we looked at in the last video, and it's what we'll use in this video for implementing offline play. So because the game will be switching back and forth between two different network adapters, RPC network adapter for online play and the dummy network adapter for offline play, calling certain methods from Godot's high-level multiplayer API in the code that needs to run offline could cause problems. So in order for your game to be offline compatible, you need to substitute a few functions. Uh, get tree is network server, which checks if this client is the host, needs to be replaced with sync manager, network adapter is network host. Get tree get network unique ID, which gets this client's peer ID, needs to be replaced with sync manager, network adapter, get network unique ID. Node dot is network master which uh, checks if this client is the network master for this node needs to be replaced with sync manager get network adapter is network master for node. Now you don't need to substitute these methods in all code. If there's code that's only ever going to be used online, using them directly is fine. But if you substitute these methods in all cases, that'll work fine too, so long as you're sure that the right network adapter is set. There's two methods from the Godot high-level multiplayer API which are actually fine to use. Those are node get network master and node set network master, which just get or set the peer ID that controls a particular node. This is a simple integer property that can be used on a node even if you're not using Godot's high-level multiplayer API. So we continue to use it. All right, let's jump over to the Godot editor and add offline support to our demo game. One quick note, if you've been following along, you'll again need to update to the latest version of the add-on. Between the last video and this video, I made some changes that relate to offline support. Anyway, the first thing that we need to do is update the UI to allow the user to choose whether to play online or offline. 
First, we need to change our connection panel from a panel container to a window dialog. So we'll right click on it, go to change type, find window dialog, and change it. It disappears, but that's just because pop-ups are hidden by default. If we click the little eyeball here, you can see it's still there. So next, we're going to add an HBox container as a child of canvas layer and add two buttons as a child of that. And then we're going to drag HBox container up above connection panel because it's conceptually first. So we'll rename the HBox container to main menu, the first button to local button, and the second button to online button. And we'll change the text in local button to play locally and the text in the online button to play online. And finally, we're going to click on main menu, click the layout drop down and center. And I just realized there's something I forgot. Let's click on connection panel again, go to window title and change that to online. All right, I think that's all the UI we need. We just need to get it wired up in script. So first, let's make the play online button work so that we get it working to the level that it was before. So we will select online button, go to the node tab, double click pressed, click connect. And then down here, we just need to pop up the connection panel. And we need to make sure that we hide the main menu in all the places that we were previously hiding the connection panel. To do that, first, we're going to need a reference to the main menu. So we'll add one up here above connection panel. And then I'm just going to press Control F and search for connection panel. And everywhere that we see we are hiding the connection panel, we will also hide the main menu. And this one, too. And the last one down here. All right. And I think that's everything we need to do to make online play work again. So we're going to test it out. Click play online. Make this one the server. Start another instance up here. Click play online. Click client. And when it starts, I can move my little character around. All right, now let's make the play locally button do something. So first we're going to select the local button in the scene tree, go over to the node tab, double click pressed, click connect. And then down here, we need to replace the network adapter with the dummy network adapter. And to do that, first we'll need to load the dummy network adapter. So we'll go back up to the top and put in a const preload. And the file is under add-ons, Godot rollback netcode, and dummy network adapter, we can just click and drag that over inside of the preload function here. Then we'll go back down to on local button pressed, and we will do sync manager network adapter, oops, equals dummy network adapter, and then sync manager start. Oh, and of course we have to hide the main menu here too as well. Now that's everything to make local play work, but this could actually break online play because you see we're changing the network adapter to the dummy network adapter, but never changing it back. So if you played offline and then played online, it wouldn't work. So we need to add one extra piece of code up here, which is sync manager reset network adapter. And this will restore the network adapter to whatever you have configured in project settings. Or if you have no network adapter configured in project settings, it'll reset it to RPC network adapter. And that's our case here too. So let's try it. We'll click play up here, press play locally and move around. And oh, oh, <laughs> both players move rather than just one because we don't actually have separate controls in our player script. So first, we need to go to project, project settings, and input map. Up until now, we've been using the UI left, UI right, UI up, UI down actions uh, for our player controls. We were really only doing that because it's a tutorial and it was fast to set up. In a real game, you should never use those for your player controls. So we're going to add some real input actions now. We're going to add a player one up, player one down, player one left, player one right, and we cannot forget player one bomb. And we're going to assign these to the WASD keys, the WASD physical keys. And we'll assign the uh, spacebar for the player one bomb. 
Now we need to create actions for player two as well. So player two up, player two down, player two left, player two right, and player two bomb. And for these, we're gonna assign the arrow keys and then the enter key for the bomb. Now we need to change our player script to actually use these input actions. So let's close this, go over to our player.gd, and we're gonna add a variable at the top, input prefix, which is a string that defaults to player one underscore. And we're gonna change all of our input actions to add this input prefix to left, right, up, down, and bomb like this. And the last thing we need to do is go back to main.gd and change the client player to use the player2 input prefix when in local mode. So over here, we'll say client player input prefix equals, oh, I'm sorry, this is the online button. When you go to the offline, I'm gonna say uh, client player input prefix equals player2 underscore. Let's give it a go. I will start up the game, click play locally, and if I use the WASD keys, it moves the player on the left, and the arrow keys, it moves the player on the right. And I can drop some bombs for this player, some bombs for this player too. Of course, you could also add controller bindings for each of the players, but I'm gonna leave that as an exercise for the viewer. That's all I have for today. It was a quick and easy one this time. But please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below or on the Snowpack Games Discord or wherever. Next time, we're going to talk about input delay and interpolation, which can be used to reduce networking artifacts in your game, support high refresh rate monitors, and buy yourself an increased frame budget. It's super interesting stuff. So please subscribe on YouTube, check out snowpackgames.com for a link to the Discord and more information about me and my work. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.